What up everybody, my name is Art is War and I'm a Twitch streamer. Today I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your Go XLR. I know there are a lot of schools of thought behind setting up a Go XLR. Today I'm going to show you what I think is the most streamlined way to do it. This method will work on single PC setups as well as dual PC setups. The real strength of the Go XLR is its ability to create multiple virtual audio devices inside of Windows that Windows can use for audio output. Now, these devices can be assigned to the four sliders on the front, and they can be found here in the Mixer tab in the Go XLR software, whether you have the full size or the mini. Now, you can assign those here in the channels, but the other important thing is that all of these devices, except for a couple, which we'll go over later in the video, are accessible inside of OBS by adding global audio devices or adding an audio input or output capture. Now, this next point is more aimed at the dual PC streamers. Single PC streamers can do this workflow regardless because there's only one PC and you're only gonna connect the GoXLR to that PC. If you're on a dual PC setup, please connect the GoXLR to the stream PC. This gives OBS access to all those virtual devices and allows you to create a separate mix for almost every device for stream versus what you hear in your ears, which is really nice if you're playing competitive and you need to hear Discord comms at a different level than stream. In general, you'll want to do the usual setup that you do for GoXLR, mapping the software that you want to each of the channels. For example, here, Discord, the input device is my chat mic. The output device is chat. If I go to sounds, you can see under app volume control, Spotify is using the music channel. All of those things are set up just like you would typically on a GoXLR. The caveat is, when you are configuring OBS, what you'll be doing is adding each of those devices on the GoXLR separately to OBS. And most of these devices, except for one, which I'll go over later, will be pre-fader. Now, what does that mean to be pre-fader? Pre-fader means that the audio that OBS receives will be before it is on any fader that it's assigned to on your GoXLR. So if you turn Discord on your GoXLR all the way down, the volume level for stream will not change. If you turn music all the way down on the slider, the volume level will not change. Now, at first, this doesn't sound like a really convenient setup, but it is because now I have independent control over my mix versus what stream hears. I can change the volume levels of the music and Discord for them, and I can crank Discord for me or lower it for me, and it will never change for them. This also allows you to set a max music volume and then control your music volume within the app of your choice, like iTunes Music or Spotify, what have you. Okay, so how do we set up all of these separate devices in OBS? The first step will be going to settings. In settings, you'll wanna to go to audio, and in audio, you'll have a section called global audio devices. Now, these are the devices that will be added to every scene in OBS regardless. So you don't have to add a source, add an audio source. This will be added to every scene. Now, there's a limit of how many playback or output sources you can have and how many input or recording sources you can have. But there's a workaround that we can use that I'll show you later. Uh, the way I have it set up is I have my system audio in the Go XLR, which is just the stream PC system, because again, my Go XLR is connected to my streaming PC. This is anything that plays back like a YouTube video that I watch on the stream PC or alerts. Alerts are monitored through this device. Next, my second desktop audio device is the music slider or the music device. This is what plays Spotify back for me. I use the VOD trick so that my live uh, streams have no music in the background. If you want a video on that, let me know in the comments below. Next, I have input devices. Now, this is the chat mic. So this is my mic with all of the processing and effects on it from the GoXLR software. That's added here. And the next one is broadcast stream mix. This is the important workaround that I mentioned earlier. If we return to the GoXLR software and we look at the routing table, you'll see here Broadcast Stream Mix only has one input device checked, and this is console. Console on the GoXLR is the optical cable. Optical is the highest quality input available on the GoXLR, and it's what I use to capture my gaming PC sound. 
For you, it could be the line in device if you're just using a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable. Um, now, this is the caveat with the GoXLR. Like I said, you can add most devices to OBS straight up. Like they will be listed in the device list. The ones that you cannot are the physical hardware connections on the GoXLR. That counts as the line in and the console in or the optical in. These must be linked to one of the virtual devices that GoXLR creates. So my workaround for this is to only include the game PC input on the broadcast stream mix. So for me, it's console again, like I said, because I'm using the optical cable out of my motherboard into the GoXLR. So this is the only fader now. So I've set up my right fader here. This fader that's wiggling, this is the line in or the optical in for me. And this fader will affect both me and stream. It's only because it's taking the hardware input and routing it to that virtual software input or broadcast stream mix. So we'll go back to OBS here and you'll see broadcast stream mix is the uh, other input. So if we were just to stop there with global audio devices, my setup would be missing one important playback device, that device being chat or Discord. Now the workaround for this, because you've reached the limit in the audio settings of OBS, is to just go to your sources in your scene and add an audio output capture. As you can see here, I already have one set up for Discord, so I'll show you the properties on that. And that is just grabbing the chat device, which you can see here in the GoXLR software, which again is set up in my Discord here. The output device is chat. So this is added to OBS. Now, an important note about audio output capture devices. You have to copy and paste this into every scene that you want your audience to hear this device on. So for me, I add the Discord device to every scene I stream on, my setup scene, my chat scene, my main gameplay scene, just so that they can hear it, and then I handle the deafen on my foot pedals. Probably the most important part of this whole audio setup is understanding how the audio mixer works in OBS. The audio mixer represents all of the audio currently happening in your stream and all the devices added to your scene. This is where we're gonna set primary levels for the output to your audience into your recordings. Now, the best way I suggest people to test this is make sure you have sound going on all the outputs. Get a friend in Discord, play back some music, play something loud on your streaming PC and talk into your mic. Record that while you adjust levels, listen to it back and see if it's something you'd like to listen to as a viewer. So in my audio mixer, you can see here I have alerts, I have Discord, I have game PC, mic, music, I'm listening to music right now while we record and stream PC. If you wanted to check, you could go into properties of each device and see the actual system device that it's using. The game PC, again, this is the important one. This is broadcast stream mix because again, in the routing table, it is the only thing in broadcast stream mix, the console or optical port, which is what I use to input audio from my game PC. Each of these has a slider. Once you set this slider, it will always stay there. Every time you open OBS, it will stay there. If you set the Discord slider to a certain level and you copy and paste it to a different scene, like I described, your audio levels will stay there. So what you need to do, like I said at the beginning, make sure audio is going through all of these different devices and set some levels. You can see here, I'll make it larger on the screen. These are my levels there about. I also have a fancy stream deck button that can increase my music volume on the fly if I really want to vibe out to chat with music. Um, it can also lower it. If you want to see that in a video, let me know in the comments below. But that's the general gist of it. Record this, listen to the mix, make the accord according adjustments that you need to make to make it sound good, and, and you'll get there. This output is what stream will hear. If I change my music slider, I don't hear any music in my headphones right now. It is totally muted. As you can see in the audio mixer, there's still music playing. The only two sliders that work are the game PC slider, and I'll show you here in the GoXLR software. So as I lower this slider, it lowers and no one can hear anything. 
because we've added the physical device to broadcast remix which is a virtual device so it will be a post fader device as you can see here music is still playing in the mixer i cannot hear it in my headphones still i have the fader all the way down what this does for you is now stream has separate audio levels from your mix that you listen to so my GoXLR is kind of borked. Um, the headphone out stopped working. So my routing table is going to look a little different from you. Most people are going to be listening to the headphone out port. And this is should have every device here checked so that you hear a mix of everything. Now, those that mix will be controlled separately by the sliders from stream, except for the one that we talked about that controls the input from the game PC. If you want to send your mic back to your gaming PC to use for in-game comms so that you can use your sampler and your vo vocal effects, the best thing that I can recommend is get another 3.5 millimeter aux cable, connect it to the line out on the back of the GoXLR, and run that into either the line in, which is typically a blue port on the motherboard, or the mic in, typically a pink port on the motherboard, and set that as your in-game mic and you'll be able to route your mic on the streaming pc back to the gaming pc now one last special note for our single pc users you guys should be able to follow this guy to a t the only thing you won't have to do is hide a physical input like line in or console inside of broadcast stream mix because you simply will not have a physical input you're on one pc so for you guys the system slider would go from alerts to alerts and game sound. It's just one small caveat. If you have any problems, let me know below. I can do a special video about single PC setups. But for now, guys, that's gonna be it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, or you can come over to Twitch and ask me directly. I'm live almost every day streaming something. Twitch.tv slash art underscore is underscore war. Art underscore is underscore war on most socials. And until the next video, I'll see you guys. Peace.